Hi and welcome to Cutting the Cord, Cable TV Alternatives. My name is Jacobri and I am the Digital Services Librarian at WFPL. So what is cutting the cord? That means that you are getting rid of your cable TV packages and going strictly to streaming services. So why would you want to do this? Most people find that cable TV packages are getting too expensive. Uh, the packages themselves can be confusing, especially if you are only using part of the service. You may have access to say 200 channels, but you're only using 10% of them. People also find that there's more variety available online, especially as TV shows and movies are more frequently found on services like Netflix and Amazon. So what do you need in order to cut the cord? The most important part of this is a strong internet connection. Next, you'll need a device on which to stream, and this can be anything from a smart TV, to a tablet, to a computer, or any of those that can hook up to a normal TV. You'll need a streaming service to download content from. And as an option, you can also get a digital antenna in order to get local channels. Digital antennas can be indoor or outdoor, but before you buy one, you'll need to figure out what channels are available where you live, how strong the signals are likely to be, and what direction they're coming from. The Federal Communications Commission has a DTV reception maps feature where you can enter your address, zip code, or city and find out what channels are available near you. This tool also shows you the signal strength, the band of channel, and what channel number you'll need to tune the antenna to to reach it. So what do you need to know? One of the biggest factors in cutting the cord successfully is your internet speed. Streaming services take quite a bit of bandwidth so in order to get high quality streaming, especially if you're going for something like HDR or 4K resolution, you're going to need a faster internet speed. Also, if you have an internet service provider that has any sort of data cap, you're going to need to monitor your data usage to make sure that you're not getting close to that cap just from watching your favorite shows. You also need to be aware of your device limitations. Something like a tablet streaming to a normal TV isn't going to be able to give you the high resolution picture that an HDR smart TV will. But if what you want is something that will stream on the go, then a tablet would be perfect for that. You may also be limited to how many devices can connect to the service at one time, especially if the service is a paid subscription. Also, videos are not available universally. And this means both that not all services have the same content, but also that different countries have different services available. For example, one service may have a movie available in the United States, but if you were trying to access the same service in, say, Canada, that uh, movie or show would not be available. Also, videos are not available permanently. You'll often find a page on each streaming service that shows the videos or series that are leaving the service soon. This is because each title is licensed to the streaming service, and those agreements often expire, especially as companies are purchased, merged, or decide to create their own streaming platform. Several of the major networks, including NBC and CBS, have created their own streaming platforms, CBS All Access, and Peacock, respectively. So as the streaming market diversifies, you'll see more and more of your favorite shows removed from popular streaming services like Netflix. Also, these streaming services have different costs. And if you find yourself needing to use more than one to get the content that you'd like, those costs can quickly add up. The last thing that you should be aware of is piracy. As you look at different sites across the internet, you might find things that seem too good to be true or that provide access without any sort of ad funding or login or, uh, or subscription cost. 
Sometimes these sites can be providing the content illegitimately. This can actually flag on your internet service provider and you may receive a cease and desist notice. So again, those streaming devices that you can use are your computer, and this can be a laptop or a desktop computer, a tablet or smartphone, which can be connected either through a wire or using something like Screencast, a smart TV where you're using apps installed on the TV to directly stream over wireless internet, or an external device. And this is something like a Roku or an Apple TV unit or a Fire Stick or a Chromecast. So what are some of these streaming services? Well, the library has actually has access to some of these. The first one I'll talk about is Hoopla. Hoopla allows you a limited amount of downloads, but those downloads can include movies and television series. Once you've checked out a film on Hoopla, it's available for 72 hours. You can also explore what Hoopla has to offer with the Categories feature. This allows you to go directly to a genre or to view one of the library created lists. Canopy also provides streaming access to films with a limited amount of access per month. Canopy has a variety of films and documentaries, including the Criterion Collection. They also have the great courses and separate out any films that have been nominated or have won an Oscar if you're interested in something that's more quality film. You'll find quite a few independent films on Canopy as well. Just like Hoopla, you'll have 72 hours once you start the film to view the entire film. Overdrive has quite a bit of offerings in the exercise category and has a collection of the great courses as well. While their collection isn't as large as Hoopla and Canopy, there's a considerable collection of foreign films as well as award winners. Overdrive also features video versions of picture books and the Little Pim language learning series for children. And our newest services through RB Digital, Acorn TV and Quello, are an unlimited pass for seven days. So you can watch as much as you'd like and then once that seven days is up, you just refresh your token and your access is restored. Acorn TV is provided through RB Digital and features British TV and films. This includes series like Miss Fisher's Murder Mysteries, Doc Martin, The Brokenwood Mysteries, and Vera. Quello specifically provides access to concerts, including classics like Little Richard and the Beatles, as well as newer artists like Beyonce and Lady Gaga. Quello also features TV channels based on genre of music. So you can view a queue of concerts if there's something that you're interested in listening to as background music or distraction. Quello also has a set lists feature which groups concerts into the best of, say, the 90s, the best of Queen, as well as other aspects like jazz or cover songs. So there are also paid streaming services. And these are in no particular order, but Amazon Prime Video, you can find that with an Amazon Prime subscription or you can pay for it separately. Disney Plus, you may also find bundled with, say, a uh, internet package or a phone promotion. It has all of the Disney movies, older films. Um, you'll also find some ABC content on there. There's also Fubo TV, which is specifically for sports. HBO has their own streaming service. Uh, Hulu is also owned by Disney, so you might find a package with, say, Hulu, Disney Plus, and ESPN. Most people are familiar with Netflix. They've kind of started off all the streaming wars that um, now you see a lot of competition with streaming. And there's also Sling TV. Sling TV is closer to the more traditional cable that you might be familiar with, as it features your favorite channels, including CNN, TLC, the History Channel, and HGTV. 
Sling also allows you to subscribe to the movie channels like Showtime, Stars, and Epix. Now each of these services has an upside and a downside. It really just depends on the content that you're looking for. Often you'll find that some of these services have free trials. I know that during this time, uh, Disney and Netflix have discontinued those trials, but if you can find a trial from a service that you haven't tried yet, it's a good way to test it out before actually investing money in it. There are also quite a few free streaming services. These are things like Crackle, IMDB TV, Plex, Pluto TV, Redbox, Stir, Tubi, Vudu, Zumo, and YouTube. And I'll be giving a little bit more information now about each one of these. Crackle is actually a joint venture between Chicken Soup for the Soul Entertainment, Sony Pictures Television, and Columbia Pictures. It's available in 21 countries and in three languages, and it allows you to view both movies and TV shows. IMDb TV is an ad-supported platform that is owned and operated by IMDb.com, which is actually a subsidiary of Amazon. There you'll find some older releases as well as some more recent, as well as some original programming. Plex is also ad supported and will also pull from other services like Crackle. They do also have a paid subscription, but that gives you a lot more options for things like cloud storage, metadata, multiple user support, and synchronization with mobile devices. Plex is a lot more than just a streaming server, so it's really something you would need to explore to see if it's right for you. Pluto TV is an ad-supported service owned by Viacom CBS. It allows you to stream live TV channels, including news, sports, comedy, and more. It also has some on-demand titles in both the TV and movie categories. While Redbox is mostly known for their kiosks where you can rent DVDs and Blu-rays, they do also have a uh, a free live TV service. And the channels include everything from cooking shows to comedy specials, sports, news, and more. Stir is an ad-supported streaming service owned by the Sinclair Broadcast Group that allows you to choose the closest major city to you and view a variety of television services curated for that city. Stir features quite a bit of classic television, including The Carol Burnett Show, Unsolved Mysteries, and The Johnny Carson Show. Tubi is an ad-supported service owned by Fox that features contents from channels like A&E, Fox, Lifetime, and more. They also feature a collection of foreign language television and movies most of which are from Korea or China. Voodoo is a service owned by Fandango, who you might have heard of because they sell theater tickets. While Voodoo does have a subscription feature, they have a specific section for free content that includes movies and TV shows. Some of their free offerings for kids include Gumby, ALF, and the classic Big Comfy Couch. Zumo is a video on demand service owned by Comcast. Zumo features both live TV as well as on demand channels and movies. And finally, YouTube has a variety of content, both corporate and consumer made. With YouTube, you'll often find clips or highlights of anything from your favorite late night shows to foreign uh, shows like Graham Norton that have been uploaded by the companies themselves so you don't have to worry about whether or not what you're watching is legitimately uploaded. YouTube does have its own TV service that is subscription based 
and you can purchase films on YouTube as well. So now that we've decided what streaming service we're going to use, how do we find something to watch? Well, you can just load up the service and start clicking through it to see if you can find something interesting. Each of these services has a search function if there's a specific uh, film or show that you're interested in. And often if they don't have that specific show or movie, they will suggest you something similar. There are also services like Real Good and Just Watch that allow you to search for things independent of platform. It'll show you every platform that that uh, film or TV show is available on. Real Good allows you to create your own account and add the streaming services that you have access to so that it can direct you to the correct service for the show that you're interested in. You can also track what you've watched, view IMDb and Rotten Tomatoes ratings, and see a streamability score for each title. This shows you how much of the series is available, whether or not it's available to watch for free, if it's available to stream on a TV Everywhere service, or available to rent or buy. This lets you make decisions based on what you're interested in and what services have those titles. Just Watch is similar in that it lets you see where different movies and TV shows can be streamed, but it also provides personalized recommendations for you based on what you've already watched and liked. It can limit these recommendations to the services that you already subscribe to or that are available for free online. You can also see what's popular in your region or area to see if there's something new that you can discover based on what the people around you are interested in. Again, this can be filtered to the services that you ha already have access to. And you can also just do a function called a watch list. And for this, as you're browsing through, you can add these films or shows to a list to be viewed later. If you are looking to cut the cord, you do need to consider what might be bundled with your cable subscription. Often these bundles can lead to lower prices. Cable services are usually bundled with things like phone or internet subscriptions. In some cases, having a landline may become prohibitively expensive if you cancel your cable subscription. You can always test your internet speed to make sure that you're getting what you pay for as well as to make sure that your streaming is strong enough, or that your internet service is strong enough to handle streaming. However, most internet service providers will only take their own tests as proof that your internet is slower than what you're paying for. So the most important decisions you'll need to make are what kind of device do you want to watch these services on? What internet service do you need to support the streaming that you're interested in? and which services have the content that most closely aligns with what you're interested in. Also, there's always the option of sharing paid streaming services with other people. While services like Netflix are constantly trying to fight against this, most services have a multi-user subscription level. The mid-tier selection for Netflix allows two users to view on different devices at the same time, and Disney Plus allows you to stream from up to four devices at the same time on the same account. When you're sharing a service, you can also set up separate profiles, which allows you to track your watch history and create your own watch list independent of what the other users of the account may be watching. Even if you choose to stick with your current cable package, you can definitely check out the streaming services available through the library or available for free elsewhere online. Thanks for joining us today and please let us know if you have any questions.